on Tiki. Tale of the Tape, brought to you by Pitbull. Attitude in a can, a bite in every swallow. Pretty much everything is even. Two years difference, just a very little reach advantage for Tiki. Both of these men love to strike. Bruce Buffer has our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, the fighter standing to my left. He is a boxing and jiu-jitsu fighting expert with a mixed martial arts record of 27 wins with 10 losses and four draws. Standing five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 168 pounds. Fighting out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Please welcome Chris Lightsaw And introducing his opponent, standing to my right, this man is a stand-up and submission fighter with a mixed martial arts record of nine wins with three losses. Standing six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Huntington Beach, California, please welcome Tiki! Our referee, Mario Yamasaki, as we get set for a potential slugfest. Tiki. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go! Against Lytle. Here we go. Nice. Nice kick by Chris Lytle. These guys look to both be accepting a stand-up fight here. Nice kicks by Chris Lytle. Tiki's a little bit short with his kicks from the outside. Nice inside punches. Oh, beautiful leg kick. And takedown, nice. Very good by Chris Lytle, he's got his back. Don't grab the fence. Don't grab the fence. He's pulling him to the ground. Oh, good job by Tiki, spinning out of it. And he eats a right hand, but delivers a right kick. Spirited action in this first round. Chris Lytle looks very comfortable in here. It looks like maybe he got his uh, octagon butterflies out from his fight with Robbie Lawler. And he's here to show his true skill. Nice leg kick. Big wild swing by Chris Lytle. Lytle just reach it in with that right hand. And again, Tiki's good, doing a good job of avoiding it. This is like back up, jump in, back up, jump in. Sizing each other up in the early goings of round number one. If anybody looks to be taken into the ground, it looks to be Lytle. He looks to uh, look to catch a leg and bring this fight to the ground. I think uh, he might feel that they're Fairly evenly matched up standing up, but he's better on the ground. Both certainly want to move into the winner's column here in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. But Lytle has 27 wins, Joe. And Tiki's never lost outside the UFC. And this just tells you how great the competition is when you get to the Super Bowl of Mixed Martial Arts. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's a whole, like, just stream of these other shows uh, that are going on, uh, small shows all across the country. And uh, these guys are getting a great experience in these shows all across the Midwest, especially, uh, you know, in, in California right now, it's illegal. It's still illegal in a lot of states, but a lot of the states in the Midwest, they have great hook and shoot bouts. These bouts are going on all the time. And these guys get a wealth of experience before they come here. The Super Brawls in Hawaii where BJ Penn and Cabbage has fought very, very many times. Monty Cox Extreme Challenge. There's, there's a bunch of these bouts. That's what this sport is about, evolution and growth. Toe to toe, and I mean toe to toe. Now remember, Lytle is 10 1 and 1 as a professional boxer, so when he gets into those close hand exchanges, he's pretty comfortable. And again, he's looking to catch one of Tiki's legs and bring him to the ground. He's got a very good ground game, too, Lytle. 
Very differing personalities in this fight. Tiki pretty flamboyant to say the least with the uh, tiger striped goatee and a personality to go along. And Lionel's a pretty quiet Indiana boy. Yeah, he's got that hardworking Midwest attitude. Absolutely. Quiet and uh, hey, I'll show you what I can do when I get in there. You got the beach against the Circle City. Good knees. Good exchanges inside. Lytle's whole left side is very well lit up from uh, Tiki's kicks. We asked Tiki if there was a different momentum as he trained together with Tito Ortiz. Is Tito getting ready for, I think, arguably the biggest fight of his life? And he said, yeah, there, there's a great enthusiasm, but he said, I had to think about what I have to do. I had to keep it into my own thoughts and not get caught up in the emotion of somebody else's fight. Nice. Good combinations there by Tiki. Tiki desperately wants to get a, a, a first win here in the octagon. I mean, he's a very experienced fighter, very underrated, because most of the times people have seen him has been those three losses to the very tough Bob Cook, Sean Shirk, and Robbie Lawler. Final seconds of round number one. Again, this fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. No championship fights tonight, so all fights, including our main event, scheduled for three five-minute rounds. And we have had non-stop action. Well, uh, a lot of these fights, the three-minute, three, excuse me, three-round fights, uh, these guys, uh, like Tito has said, it gives them a chance to push the pace more. Absolutely. He doesn't have to worry about holding out and conserving some energy for the fourth and fifth round. Another celebrity, Juliette Lewis. That's a familiar face and a famous one in that. She looked like she'd kick a little ass in Natural Born Killers. Yes, yeah, she did. Look at it. She's loving it. <laughs> Coming up, our main event of the evening. Friendship, finances, film, maybe even fear had entered into the equation of why that man Tito Ortiz would not fight that man Chuck Liddell. Well, forget about all that because the main event of the evening is on. It is Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell, and it is coming up next. Kind of regroup, take another deep breath, and understand that the climax is forthcoming absolutely and what a climax i'm sure it will be long time coming who is in whom's head right now i wonder little exchange at the weigh-ins i'll tell you it has gotten ready? good exchange on the ready? best damn sports Let's show go. period on fox sports net lots of exchanges of words and verbiage nice documentary done by our friends at direct tv the talk is over. It's time to fight. These two men right now in the welterweights are very interested in fighting. Lytle in the white shorts, Tiki in the dark trunks. It's a been uh, an, an interesting evolution in mixed martial arts lately where uh, a lot of the fights have moved to stand-up bouts. You know, it used to be uh, all the fights were, I mean, a lot of the fights were one on the ground, but so many of the fights now are dictated by the stand-up fighting. Why do you believe that's the case? Well, you know what? I mean, it's all an evolution. I mean, we, we saw in the beginning that uh, grapplers uh, could take down a striker who doesn't have any grappling experience and submit them easily. So everybody thought, well, hey, you know, you gotta you got to learn how to grapple. And then once people learned how to avoid grappling or avoid the takedown and stand up, we saw Maurice Smith versus Mark Coleman. Nice exchange by Tiki. Maurice Smith versus Mark Coleman was an excellent example of that. We see how lost a grappler really is. If he doesn't have striking experience, he's fighting a world-class striker like Maurice. And it's just, it's a constant evolution. We see what's successful, we see knockouts, we see submissions, and it's all a part of the evolution of being the complete sport of mixed martial arts. And as I say that, Chris Lytle takes Tiki to the ground. Absolutely, he utilized the closing of distance and setting up the takedown with the right hand. And there were some good exchanges back and forth with Lytle and Tiki again here so far in the second round. Yeah, absolutely. Lytle is very comfortable on the ground here. He's in Tiki's half guard, and he's looking to pass, and he passes smooth. Very nice. Very nice pass. Good control, good side position here. He's got side control of Tiki. Tiki tries to buck him off and rolls, and he's got his back. Lytle showed some very good ground skills. He's got a choke here. He does Pop have up. it. He does have it. The Carlos New Schoolyard choke. Oh, my. A stand-up roar that went to the ground. 
for just a moment and Lido lays in the choke and wins by submission. Right out of Carlos Newton versus Pat Militich. He left his head out there and he grabbed a hold of it and tapped him out. And unfortunately, Tiki goes 0 and 4 in the UFC. Probably the most talented guy to never get a victory in the UFC. Second round win by submission. And there you see the depth of the skills Let's of take the mixed martial artist. Let's take a look at the big play and see this finish. He's just got a, a straight schoolyard headlock. Let's take another look at it. He's on the side, no hooks in, no body control, just a headlock. One mistake. That's all it takes. Absolutely. In this sport. One Under mistake. the chin, squeeze, cuts off the blood to the brain. He got a tap. Tiki obviously disappointed. And Chris Lytle wins for the first time in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Let's check in with Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner at 1 minute 55 seconds of the second round. The winner by tap out due to a rear naked choke, Chris Lytle!